Let's predict a record right quick. Let's do this. Let's go to the Pacific Northwest. Let's talk about Oregon. Oregon's coming off a year where they got blown out by Georgia in Dan Lanning's first game. And then the rest of the way, they lost a three-point game to Washington, and they lost a four-point game to Oregon State, and that was it. They won the Holiday Bowl. They ended up going 10-3. and three. And um, there's a really, really wide range of prediction and expectation for them this year. I told you, and I'll tell you again, I think it's the most underrated team in all of the top 15 in the AP poll. Well, we've got Oregon as a top five team. The AP's got them number 15. So I think very highly of them. So naturally, when I go with best case out of the potential record scenarios for Oregon, I'm telling you if best case happens, there's an undefeated regular season in the cards for them. 12-0 and 0 is the best case for Oregon. There is strong disagreement in the building on this, but there's only one microphone here. And you know how much I would love to put Jesse and Colin on air if I could, but we only had budget for one mic. I'm sorry. So... I'm looking at Oregon, and I'm asking myself, anytime I want to know best-case scenario, I want to know who are your toughest games, obviously. There is no Georgia on the schedule this year. Now, they go to Texas Tech in Week 2, and that features two of the most underrated teams in the country for me, by the way. But if I look later in the year, because it's a backloaded schedule, if I look later in the year, they go at Washington. They're a a two-and-a-half-point dog, or two, depending on where you look. They go to Utah, one-and-a-half-point dog. They play USC at home. They're favored by two over USC. They play Oregon State at home. They're favored by seven. So if, if you're not projected to be any more than a two-point dog at any point this year, of course there's a path for you to go undefeated. And as I talked to you about before in the show, I think line of scrimmage talent is being overlooked for them right now. O-line specifically because that's a perceived weakness by folks who saw them lose a lot. I don't think it's going to be as big a weakness. And I also think they're stacking defensive front talent uh, that allows them to be a lot more multiple than they were last year. And I love Bo Nix. So, you know, I, for example, look at the Heisman poster they put all over New York City and I say, good for them. I think we got an open wall in here if you guys want to explore that and experiment with that. But what about the worst case? Okay, we, we, we pumped them up a little bit there. Let's deflate the tires now. The worst case for Oregon would be 7-5. and five. Admittedly, I got a lot of faith in what Landing's going to do in year two. But there is also the risk that it just doesn't fire, it doesn't click. And you're left with, with yourself asking the question, was year one the aberration? Is this really what we got? Why did we extend this guy? Who else was coming after him? You know that whole song and dance. What if they can't replicate or replace that skill and starting experience on the offensive line. That's always a potential. Injury could pop up. That's everyone's worst case. You could just get bad Bo Nix. Hey, what if, what if losing Kenny Dillingham as your offensive coordinator down to Arizona State as the new head coach there, what if that has a much bigger impact maybe than someone like me expects? And hey, while we're at it, maybe the rest of the Pac-12 was just better than everyone thought they were going to be. That all could be baked into having a 7-5 and five record for Oregon. But what's the most likely record? I toyed with 11-1 and one here. Their over-under is 9.5. I actually toyed with 11-1. and one. I went with 10-2 and two as the most likely. Uh, there is a strong lean as a result of that towards me picking them to win the Pac-12. I, I just, I love the personnel they have defensively. Like, it is not a finished product over there. I like the personnel they have. I've told you guys since spring, in a league that is really stacked at quarterback, getting after the quarterback is going to be the key to winning the Pac-12. And I think that Oregon's going to be able to do it. And so I think 10-2 and is the most likely path here. That's an over if you're keeping track on the Vegas board. And, you know, that's flirting with playoff contention. That may very well be good enough to win the Pac-12. Oregon, really high on them this year. Really high on them. They start with Portland State before they go to Texas Tech in week two.